Hello, this is Jack from Historical Archery, and today we have this interesting Roman crossbow reproduction that I made. This reproduction that I made is based on the Gallo-Romano reliefs, the stone reliefs, from uh, modern-day France, it's specifically the Saligonac reliefs. There's another one in Saint-Marcel, and both of these reliefs depict crossbow-looking devices. So when it comes to the Roman military during this time period, they relied on heavy infantry for most of their battles. Of course, they had other auxiliary units such as uh, cavalry, um, and then you sometimes have uh, archers from uh, mostly Syria. You have Balearic slingers. Um, but generally speaking, there's very little mention about crossbows. When it comes to siege engines, most of the siege engines were actually torsion powered. So according to the work of Vegetius on his second book, Epitomare Militaris, um, he did depict, he did mention a machine shooting device called the Archibalista. When it comes to the Manubalista, most scholars think it's a torsion powered device, um, but then now you're left with the Archibalista. So with the word arc, it literally means arc, like bow, maybe it's a bow ballista. So this, um, from the linguistic word there, it logically makes sense that um, crossbows existed back then from this uh, primary source. Um, and of course, we have the um, Gallo-Romanic reliefs um, of pictorial um, artwork uh, depicting similar devices where it's not a torsion powered device. Now in the book, these weapons are talked about in the context of siege warfare, um, mostly. So, which makes sense. A lot, a lot of times, crossbows are used for sieges, and um, so it makes sense that the Romans sometimes use this. Um, one of the advantages during the siege is you can really conserve ammunition and save wood, which is pretty important because an arrow can be this long, and you need to make sure the arrow is perfectly spined and right, and and you know the right. Uh, st stiffness and the right length for the archer. When it comes to crossbows, the type of ammunition you can use is a lot more varied. So for a siege, you, that means you can produce more um, ammunition. Um, for example, when the arrow breaks, you can turn that into a crossbow bolt. And during a siege, rate of fire isn't that important. Uh, uh, so, but ammunition is quite important during a siege. Um, so, you know, it's nice to have broken arrows and then you have all the time in the world because you're being sieged anyways and make some bolts out of the arrows and a crossbow you can use that to shoot. The Romans also had tube-like devices where you shoot very small bolts um, in a similar concept um, but it requires this tube and it takes skill to do that. Not anyone can do it. Um, but this, anybody can pick this up and shoot it and shoot these short ammunition without harming themselves. Um, relatively speaking. Now that we got that out of the way and the advantages of these crossbows during that time period, let's talk briefly about my reproduction. The primary difference between mine versus the historical relief is that mine is longer after the nut. The, 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 the handle of the Roman one of the Gallo-Romano relief is a lot shorter. Why did I extend the length? That's because in Canada you have the 500 millimeter rule and the two hand rule. So by extending this much longer, this is intentionally designed to be a two hand crossbow because it's too heavy to be held one hand. If it was shorter, um, it could be more debatable if it was a one hand or two hand, um, but by intentionally designing it a lot longer, it's a lot harder to hold this one hand. This is not designed as a one-handed crossbow, and I did that intentionally for, for the Canadian law. The other thing is I added walls here, but on the original artwork, you don't see walls. And I can see that being done because most of the weight is not held by the pin, but rather the nut pushing against the stock. Now, because mine is made so that it relies on the pin, my walls need to be reinforced. When it comes to the product of the Roman crossbows, we just don't know what they would have used. You know, it could be composite or it could be a self uh, wood bow. We just really don't know. Um, mine is made of uh, modern uh, fiberglass and wood uh, bundled together and also PVC and, and then wrapped together with cloth. Um, 
and that's why it has a low draw weight for the dimension because PVC is quite hollow. Um, but uh, you know the historical composite ones of this dimension, if it was made of horn sinew, you can look at easily 300 pounds of draw weight. But because this is mostly hollow PVC and fiberglass in there, um, it's not that heavy, even though it looks heavy. The string on the stone relief is actually a lot thinner than mine, so it's probably made of sinew if it was actually that dimension. Um, but mine is made of um, uh, natural plant fibers, so it, it needs to be thicker. Um, it could have been thinner than this though, but I beefed up the thickness, um, so I don't need to replace the string as often. Um, and then another difference, um, well, you don't really know, but from the top down view, you don't see lashings. But then at the same time, the bow is very close to the ends. So if you take the artwork literally, the you can't really have wedges this close to the end because there's a very thin piece amount of wood holding it. Um, unless the draw weight's very, very light. Um, then the wedges, if you do have wedges, which won't show as much, then this piece right here would just shear off very easily with those wedges. Um, so um, you can't take the artwork literally. So when Todd made his reproduction, his wood is a lot further away, so you have a lot more wood holding that. You can't have this piece too thin um, if you have those wedges. Just keep that in mind. Mine is just simple European lashings, um, similar to the medieval period. Um, and in my opinion, these are small details that an artist would, wouldn't really remember when they draw these things. Um, and so you can't take these things literally. The other difference is the color. Well, this is not actually a dense uh, tropical wood, even though it's dark. Simply because, why not? The Romans had access to all kinds of paint and stains. Uh, even if the wood is, you know, light, they can easily paint it if they want. So I painted it with a pretty boring brown color. So they can stain their wood if they wanted to. We just don't really know. So I wanted to give it a different color compared to the other reproductions. Um, of course, um, I highly doubt they would use dark, dense wood because that's most likely for the elite, for the nobles, um, for furniture or you know high quality um, uh, you know artwork. So I don't think they would use that. But it, there's no reason they wouldn't stain their wood. And something like brown is very easily stainable um, to, to achieve this color. It's not purple stain. <laughs> um, we we don't really know, but it looks and, and look and. You know, there's a lot of things we don't know about these crossbows, um, and this is my interpretation of it. And of course, I don't make the best reproductions. There are people who make reproductions much better than me, but I do like to talk about the history of these crossbows, and I hope you enjoyed this video. So I spanned it. It's really muddy, so I'm sitting on a chair. And I have my shoes off because it's muddy. Now let's shoot this thing. Well, dead, dead in the center. But you can see it doesn't go, go fast because I have sinew, it's not horn and sinew as the bow. It's fiberglass and PVC, and then I put a lot of tape. I wrap a lot of tape to get this thickness. Um, so it's a lot of extra weight for nothing besides cosmetically looking like it. It's just a fun little crossbow that I made for fun. And I hope you enjoy uh, this little thing that I made.